OK, guys, so uh, happy Easter and I uh, hope things are going well for you. Uh, we've got some uh, questions here to practice. Uh, this is the first of uh, a few videos over the holidays to uh, give you something to focus on. Um, every couple of days this should uh, appear uh, for you to practice uh, from the higher GCSE papers. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you the questions, um, stop the video at any time, have a go at them and then I'll uh, do the answers and then you can uh, check how you're getting on. So here are the questions. Okay, so start going through the answers and then uh, you can see uh, how you can get on with them. Okay, so this one uh, talks about probability and it's uh, given us some information in a table. It's got some x's in it, so uh, it's likely to be that we're going to create an equation. Um, so we need some information to do that. So it's telling us here that the probability of rock is 1 20th and we've got to work out the probability of jazz. So there's our key information. Um, we know that probability uh, is all about um, kind of a fraction really. It could be written as a decimal or percentage but technically a fraction. And we know on the bottom of that fraction we're going to need the total um, outcomes. So we can see from here that we have this number of uh, CDs. So we have 2 plus x plus 2x plus 5. That's our total uh, number of outcomes. And they're telling us that there were two rock ones. So the probability of getting a rock is 2 out of. And we know that that's equal to 1 20th. Because that's what the uh, information in the question has told us. So we can see that we've got an equation here that uh, we just swap things around uh, using uh, the rearranging ideas. And then we can find the value of x, put it back into the table, and we should then be able to get the probability of jazz, which is what the question wanted. So we can tidy this up a little bit. So we can uh, simplify this down. So we've got 3x plus 7 equals 1 20th. And we can see that if we um, times by 20, we end up with 40. Times by 3x plus 7, we end up with 3x plus 7. And that's uh, the equation. Uh, take away 7 from both sides. Then we end up with 33 equal to 3x, therefore x is 11, because we divide by 3. And once we know that x is 11, we go back to the table and we can see that 2 11s are 22, plus 5 is 27, and 11 there. So there were 40 possible outcomes altogether. So we add those numbers up, we get 40. So the question says, what's the probability of jazz? And the probability of jazz then is going to equal 27 out of 40. Okay, so that's how that question uh, could have been sorted. This question uh, gives you some information about a graph, it's about taxi journeys, and the question's asking you to work out the formula for the cost of the taxi journey in terms of n. So we can see this is a straight line, so it's kind of crying out at us to use the principles of y equals mx plus c to work out the equation of this line and that would then allow us to uh, connect the two variables cost and number of miles <coughs> to get the formula. So we need two points because this formula tells us that the gradient is equal to the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. So we need two coordinates and that allows us then to use the formula for the gradient to calculate uh, the m part. Um, so we've got a nice coordinate there and when we look, we've got another nice coordinate here. What we mean by nice is we can just read off the numbers, their exact answers. So this coordinate is 5, 5.5, and, and this coordinate is 0, 2.5. So in here then, we do the change in the y coordinates, so 5.5 take away 2.5, and, and then we divide it by the change in the x coordinates, so 5 take away 0, and that gives us 3 fifths or 0.6. Um, because it wants the um, formula connecting C and N, then using the ideas of Y equals MX plus C, we can change the Y into the variable C. M we've calculated as uh, 0 0.6. X is uh, defined as the number of miles N, 
and C is the intercept point if you remember on uh, straight line graphs when X is 0 and that happens to be a value of 2.5 so we'll replace that with 2.5 so that's the answer to the question um, it wanted you to write a formula for this uh, particular taxi and uh, we can see that uh, we use the equation of the straight line to do that um, we could check it works so we could say right what happens when n equals 4 miles then we're doing 0 0.6 times 4 plus 2.5 that gives us a uh, total cost of 4.9 but it's pounds so 4 pounds 90 and then when we come to 4 we can see here that it is 4.9 so we're okay the check worked so that's how that question uh, could have been done um, this next question talks about a ball it's being dropped vertically and it's directly proportional so this is kind of shouting out at us that we're going to be using d is proportional to t squared so d will equal kt squared and it's given us some conditions here to calculate the value of k so we can rearrange this to get k and so the depth was 45 and the time was 3 so that gives us an answer of 5 um, and these uh, kind of proportionality questions um, quite uh, common to find a formula connecting the two variables so now we know that k is 5 then we can write the formula down as d equals 5t squared um, just got to be careful with this question because it says how far does the ball drop in the next 7 seconds so that's telling us that we're now dealing with t as 10 so the depth of uh, the ball will be, uh, or the fall, will be 5 times 10 squared, which is going to be 500 metres. Um, but the question says how far does the ball drop in the next 7 seconds? So to finish off the question, we're going to have to do 500, take away the original 45 metres um, that it fell in the first 3 seconds. So we're going to get 455 metres. So that's the answer to that particular question. Um, so again, proportionality, get down the relationship, rearrange to get the k uh, function, and then uh, work with the product constant of proportionality, then divide uh, to get the k value in this case, uh, work out the formula, and then that connects the two variables, and then put in the numbers we know. Um, classic kind of question, so hopefully you can get into a habit of following a routine with these guys. Okay, so this next one um, looks rather complicated, um, but again, it's like a lot of these complicated questions. If we break down each sentence, then we should be able to see what we've got to do. Um, so it's about a logo. Um, it's saying they're congruent, so straight away in this picture then we should be able to add an information. So basically, these two triangles are identical, because that's what congruent means. So straight away, we know that's going to be 38 degrees. We know that's going to be 26 centimetres and we know that's going to be 15 centimetres. Um, it then talks about a sector, um, so we know that's um, going to be about, because it's about area this question, then we know it's going to be about the sector area. So we write down the formula for that, so theta over 360 times pi r squared. Uh, again, as always guys, learn your formulas. Um, and it's shouting out about area and we've got triangles and if we look carefully we can see that this is a side angle side triangle and once we know we've got side angle side triangle then we know we can be using a half a b um, sine of c for area and we know that we can be using the cosine rule for working out missing lengths or angles for a side angle side triangle so again a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cause of big A. So again it's about breaking the question up into bits and then deciding what information uh, we get from it and we can see here that it's about area and we've got lengths and angles and we've got sas triangles, side angle side triangles so we're going to be using these formulas uh, to work out uh, the answer. Um, so the first thing we need to know is um, the area of the triangles and then we can work out this because we know that's the center and we know this is the radius. So if we use the um, sine formula, the area equals formula, to get the area of triangle. So area of triangle AEB is equal to the area of triangle AEC. So that equals a half times 15 times 26 times the sine of 38 degrees. So, as usual, we get our calculator. 
and we plug in. So half point five times fifteen times twenty six times the sine of thirty eight degrees, making sure the calculator is in degrees mode. Okay. And we need to double that, so I'm just get that written down first there, so 120.05. And there's two of those triangles because they're congruent, so we can double that. So 240, so area of triangles equals 240.108 uh, square centimetres. Okay, so that's the area of the triangle. Um, we now need the length of the radius. Well, we've got a side angle side triangle, so we're going to use a cosine rule. So we know that a squared is equal to b squared. Well, if we call this b, call this a, and that doesn't really matter. Um, so that's a, so this is little a. Um, so that's b, so this will be c. Okay, so let's go for it. So we've got 26 squared plus uh, 15 squared minus 2 times 15 times 26 times the cosine of 38 degrees. So we've got 26 squared plus 26 squared plus 15 squared. Minus 2 times 15 times 26 times the cosine of 38 equals, and then we need to square root that because we know that's a squared. So a squared equals 286.35. So a will equal the square root of that. So 16.922. OK, the question talks about two significant figures, so if we write down uh, three or four uh, significant figures while we're working out, then we should be able to round appropriately. OK, so that's the uh, length of uh, the radius, so we know that equals the radius. And then we can use this formula to calculate the uh, sector area. So we know the angle in the sector is 108 degrees, we're dividing by 360, we're times in by pi, and we're times in by... 16.922 squared. Okay, so we've got 108 uh, divided by 360 times pi times 16.922 squared. Okay, so that equals 269.88 two square centimetres, so the total area is equal to 269.822 plus 240.108, so if we add on 240.108, and we get uh, 509.99, which is equivalent to uh, 510 to two significant figures. Okay, so that question uh, came down to using uh, a few ideas that we got from the picture. Uh, to thinking of this idea, what congruency means, two triangles being the same, all the angles, etc., length the same. Uh, we knew we had a side angle, side triangle, so therefore we could be using these two formulas. And uh, that's how that question was done, guys. Okay, so last one. Okay, so we've got a class of 28 students, and it talks about the mean, so straight away under the what do we know, then we should be thinking about um, total height, divided by number of people, because the mean is about the total of everything, divided by the number of items that gave you that total, in this case we're talking about heights and uh, people. So that's fine. Um, so this one tells us, um, well, because it's telling us what the mean height actually is, um, then we can rearrange this to get the total. So the total is equal to the mean times the number of people. Um, because we know that's true, then we can just put here then the total for the boys' heights is going to be 12 times 1.58. So 12 times 
equals. So 18.96 meters. So that's all the boys' heights added together. And we know the mean for everybody. So that's the total for the boys. Um, total for all is going to be 28 times 1.52. So now we've got 28 times 1.52, so 42.56 meters. Um, so the height of the girls, so the height of the girls is equal to 42.56, take away 18.96. Uh, 23.6 meters. So the mean for the girls then, so the mean for the girls must be equal to their total height divided by the number of girls. Well there were 28 students all together, 12 boys, so we've got to take away the 12, so that's 16. So if we now divide that by 16, then we get 1.475 meters. OK, so this question was about recognising how to reverse the mean um, idea. So the mean is always the total of every variable added together, divided by the number of um, variables, the number, the number of items that gave that to total. And then we can rearrange that to get the totals um, by doing the mean times the number of items, the number of people in this case. And away we go to get the answer. So there you go, guys. That's your first uh, revision session. A bit more on uh, Tuesday.